Good morning, everyone. My name is uh, Christine de Groot. I work with the National Research Council. I'm an evaluation officer with the Canadian Construction Materials Centre. Are you hearing me okay? Is this much better? Thank you very much for adjusting this. So um, my presentation today, as, as stated, is going to be building for 2020. So this is how we're going to get ourselves ready for 2020. And in particular with a focus on climate change, resilience opportunities. So for those of you who were pre present this morning at um, the earlier presentation, a couple of my first few slides might be a repeat for you, but for those who are new at this presentation, I'll go over them and um, uh, give you some information about the National Research Council of Canada. Then I'll get into the construction area at the NRC and what we can do and opportunities, what we can provide to work together. And then finally, um, with the CCMC, the Canadian Construction Materials Centre, and how this can move forward or help innovation move forward. And um, wrap it up at the end with just a bit of information on the IRAP program, especially critical and important for small and medium enterprises in Canada and helping them move forward to get their innovation to market. So, next slide. So the National Research Council of Canada, we're approximately 3,500 employees and it's, we're all across Canada and um, we have uh, so we, we function in every province and we have very unique facilities um, these facilities can range anything from a, um, a wind tunnel a telescope a wave pool this is a wave pool for research um, and dealing with how the impacts of water and, um, and, and elements like that uh, we have a global reach so some of our facilities are the best in the world or unique or the only ones in the world and uh, we had the great pleasure of uh, last year celebrating our 100 years of innovation so it's a uh, great pride to be working at NRC and um, celebrating 100 years of innovations. Um, you'll see on this, this um, uh, slide uh, the little triangle that uh, represents IRAP and again for small, medium build, um, enterprises, companies, the IRAP is across Canada and this is, gonna, this is a, a very good um, source of information and support and I'll again talk about that at the end. So the NRC is a very broad multidisciplinary organization and we're grouped together in three um, sectors. We have the engineering, life sciences, emerging technologies. Under engineering there is the construction uh, portfolio and that's the focus for this presentation but um, just to let you know in some of these areas we have expertise that we could um, collaborate and work with so for example we have um, in, in the construction we have um, daylighting we deal with daylighting and measurements of it well under emerging technologies we have our measurement standards and measurement um, science group and they have collaborated with us to help move that technology of making measurements and reading information. Another area is um, aerospace. A lot of us spend time in airplane and we all know about uh, air quality in airplanes. Well, at construction we have experts in the indoor air environment and so we've collaborated together to move, take our knowledge and move it forward. So at NRC Construction, we've been around since 1947 so that's 70 years next year, so we'll be celebrating 70 years. As we are right now, we're grouped into um, six areas, and um, in my presentation I will unpack those groups and give you more detailed information on their specialties and their areas. So we have our building envelope and materials, we have our civil engineering and infrastructure, intelligent building operations, fire safety, building regulations and technical and testing services. So at the earlier presentation, um, Philip um, Briscala uh, touched a lot on the building regulations on how to move forward with, or what's going to be taking place. And I'll be dealing um, with all of our groups and how the collaboration and work can, uh, can, can move forward for innovations. So if you, had, if you were at that presentation this morning, you now know how to keep yourself informed. And if you weren't, take the time to go to um, the Codes Canada website, um, uh, check out attending a meeting, because this is all open to the public. Check out about attending a meetings, check out the, the, um, 
the public reviews of code changes. So this is, this is enabling you to become informed of what's going to be taking place in 2020, of the changes that are going to be moving forward in how we're dealing with climate change in the building code. So keep yourself informed, because when you're informed, you then know, or as we say, what's next? Well, what's next is you who have the innovations. So preparing yourself for the opportunities. And um, I don't know if any of you had heard um, an interview with uh, Minister um, Catherine McKenna um, on uh, the House on the CBC radio show this past weekend. She was being interviewed about climate change. So she's our Minister for Environment and Climate Change. And one of her statements was, she says, we don't know what the innovations are going to be. And that's true. It's not the government that knows what the innovation is going to be. It's you. It's you, the businesses. It's you, the entrepreneurs. It's you, the students. It's you, the graduate students who know what innovations are going to be out there. So that's, this is how taking your ideas and moving forward and how we can help that out there. So anyone who um, has a product idea and wants to commercialize your product, you have to become familiar with technology readiness levels. You won't be able to see the details of, of this um, TRL um, uh, 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 levels that I provided to you here on the slide, but this is available at um, Public Works and Service Canada website. So if you are a small business, if you're an innovator, you need to go to this website. They provide a lot of information and direction on how to get your innovation to market. And this is your source of helping to you move forward. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you our three groups at NRC Construction and where we can help you at the different levels of readiness. So essentially, um, level one is the idea you've got your actually level zero is the idea and level one is helping you move forward all the way to the point of level nine and level nine is actually getting your product out to market so with our research groups we can touch on areas from level one to four our technical services and advisory services where that's in the middle ground area that's level four to nine and then finally with the ccmc evaluations that's level nine that's actually getting your product out to market You'll see some overlaps in these areas, but that's all dependent on where you are and where you need collaboration or where you need our expertise or where you need your facilities. So I'll go on to the next slide. So with our research groups here, it provides access to expertise and equipment, so opportunities. So not all organizations may have some of these uh, facilities or equipment in order to uh, move their product forward in innovation. As well, um, you may, you are the expert in your innovation, but there may be some factors that you're not aware of. So our researchers in their expertise can help you become even more knowledgeable and move forward in, in, in making sure you have a robust product that's ready for um, innovations. So again, with this group here, research, you're at your level one to level four in your technology readiness level. You're working from basic principles. So if you don't know all the basic principles, we have researchers who do in some of the areas and the concepts. And we're looking at uh, researching and developing technologies and concepts for the innovation. Uh, and, and, and through this, we can move your uh, demonstration or your, your prototype into a demonstration level of meaning we're starting to sort of say, okay, it's gone from concept, we're actually formalizing and getting something that we can start to demonstrate. So these are again at the uh, TRL levels one to four. So. Some of the um, uh, areas of expertise that we had that I sort of highlighted way at the beginning on those six, six sectors, one of them is um, intelligent building operations. So in this area, we deal a lot with the indoor environment, indoor air quality, um, uh, lighting control um, elements on that. And when you think about climate change and sort of the factors and elements that are coming around us from the exterior, our safe haven is in our indoor, our indoor environment, our indoor location. So dealing with 
the impact of that in our environment is maybe something that we're going to have to um, consider with the changes coming with climate change. And another thing that's very um, unique at NRC about our indoor environment, our intelligent building operations, is um, it has a human um, impact, a human aspect to it, and our researchers actually take that into consideration. So we deal with human um, reaction or impact to lighting, to indoor environments. So we have that element on that. So that's a very unique um, uh, component in our indoor environment, in our indoor um, uh, uh, group. Another area we have uh, a broad um, scope of expertise in, it's called the, I'll call it the dynamic building envelope. So essentially the building envelope is that shell, and that shell is either the walls, the roofs, the foundation, and that is the, the shell that protects us from the exterior, so whatever events are happening due to extreme weather, um, and the indoor. So this shell here, and this is probably where maybe some very, as, as Philip had mentioned in the earlier presentation, some of these innovative products, how are we going to deal with hail? How are we going to deal with the winds, increases wind? How are we going to deal with the, the rain, fire? So this envelope here, the building envelope, there's a, probably a lot of opportunities in um, either taking our standard products right now and ramping them up or actually coming up with some more innovative products that can handle the climate change. So again, um, the facilities that we have here and the expertise in researching and their knowledge of sort of current products and future innovative ones, um, you can tap into this area here as well. This is a great facility that we have, our uh, large-scale energy system integration. And I'll just highlight here, uh, one of the elements is, is those twin houses on the left. So essentially what those houses are is one is a benchmark house. That house, nothing changes. The other house, we will put in whatever the innovation is or the concept that you have. And we will then run it in real time, in real life, because they're outdoor and we'll take measurements and we'll measure whatever it is that your product or your concept is trying to achieve and we'll do comparisons between so you get real life situation and a comparison from your two house from the two houses there so this is an extremely unique facility to be able to do that in a in a in a, uh, a live um, uh, situation so as well at um, the NRC construction um, part of the um, the initiative from the government towards uh, climate change is dealing with our infrastructure. So that is our roads and our bridges. I mean, when you start having uh, huge flooding issues or 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 um, snow events or anything like that, our roads and our bridges are our connection between our com our communities. So we have expertise in infrastructure, and they will also be working um, uh, putting together the guides or changes to the building code. So their knowledge can be very beneficial on helping to move forward with our infrastructure. So at this point, I'd like to check back to your innovation. So I've showed you how we can deal with um, sort of at the early stages of your innovation for research. Now, we would be at a point where your prototype is getting pretty much there. You've done some, some research, you've put it all together, and now, now your, 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 your innovation is ready to be tested either in a simulated environment or a laboratory to actually then prove prove that it is actually performing as is. In the earlier stages, there's probably a lot of adjustments that you did. Now you're at the stage where you say, okay, let's quantify this. Let's, let's have some evidence on that. Again, it's prototype. You probably will have to tweak it again from this point on. There's no guarantees even. So, so I'll highlight um, uh, the stages, the next stages on that. So we have at uh, NRC Constructions, so we call it our technical and advisory services. So um, this helps organizations who may not have the testing facilities um, uh, at their disposal or some of um, testing knowledge, what are some of the standard testing, what are some modifications that can be done to it. So tapping into this group when you're in that, your four to nine stage in your technology readiness level is a great opportunity as well. So in here, we have expertise um, who can actually develop test procedures for you. So 
you have an innovation, but no one will be able to accept it unless you can prove it. So you got to come up with test methods to prove to prove the performance of the product. And um, working with an independent government organization is actually uh, a very good way of, of having unbiased uh, means of proving and developing a test method. As well, um, uh, setting up um, benchmarks, meaning say, for example, there are already existing products, the performance of yours is maybe a superior one, so we can do testing of benchmarks, and benchmarks would be available in the building code, so sort of acceptances that the building code has, and so we move from, from that towards. So, as well as depending where you are, if you're already um, at the level nine, um, you could come to NRC for testing. A testing for qualification. So <clears throat> some of the testing facilities that we have um, at uh, construction, we have acoustics, hygrothermal, the indoor environment, uh, fire safety and structural testing. So it's a, it's a wide gamut and so depending on your product you may need to have testing in several of these areas and so we have the expertise there and um, so there's some opportunities there to work with that. So. Again, we're going to check back at your innovation. So you've gone through your prototype testing, uh, test procedures have been modified, and now you're ready to get your product commercialized. One of the key, key elements is here, you've already started manufacturing the product or your system and putting that together. So how do you accelerate and gain market access? So this is where the Canadian Construction Materials Centre um, comes into play. So we're the uh, National Evaluation Services for all types of um, innovation for building construction materials, products and systems. Uh, we've been around since uh, 1988 and um, CCMC uh, works in collaboration with the provinces and territories so this is helping gain access and, it, and um, I'll, I'll highlight it here is um, we provide an impartial technical opinion on innovative products. Now the impartial element is, is because we are the federal government. And so the federal government, we want to be able to help entrepreneurs, businesses be successful for Canada. So the manufacturers, as I said, entrepreneurs, we want them to be successful for Canada. But on the other side, um, we want to ensure the health and safety of Canadians. So as an organization, we balance those two. So it enables us to move forward and Canada to move forward and have health and safety in mind and also allow manufacturers to prosper and, and uh, entrepreneurs. So the evaluations that CCMC do are related to the national building codes and provincial codes. And so that's what I was saying. We, we work um, in conjunction with uh, the provinces and territories. And as uh, mentioned earlier this morning, NRC, through its committees, publishes the model building codes, but it is the provinces and territories that uh, enact the, the building code for their, for their jurisdiction. So um, uh, the other point here is the CCMC evaluation is specific for a particular manufacturing plant. So um, we'll take it with non-innovative products as an example. So you can have a manufacturing plant where we've done a CCMC evaluation and we've looked at their quality control process. So they either have a 9,000 process or something along that line. So they can manufacture. We've done testing to prove that. You can have another manufacturer doing the same sort of product, it's the same product category, but there's no guarantee that they are producing the same kind of product. So that's why our evaluations are um, manufacturing site specific, because we're looking at the quality of the product coming out it and their ability to deal with that. In CCMC evaluations, you will see some limitations and conditions, and that's just enabling the building officials to understand what the evaluation was, the intended scope of it, and um, where it can be used and what are some of the conditions and limitations on it. And CCMC, this is where you're ready, you've manufactured your product, you've been trying to gain market access, but it's not happening, this is how we can get you to the market access, and our evaluations are for Canada-wide. So as I said, we work with the provinces and territories, so they're aware of these things that are, that are coming forward from CCMC. So 
the evaluation process, how it takes place, is it's a specific process at looking at alternatives to um, uh, the building codes, so the objectives and functional statements in, um, in the building codes. Based on that, we will develop um, technical requirements. So those are those performance indicators. Those are that evidence that you need to prove to the users. So these performance, and, and they're based on test protocols. And then um, finally, it will be some acceptance criteria that needs to be established. So um, there's minimum performance levels that are expected. Um, it's it's going to be an interesting challenge to see how we're going to move forward with climate change. What are those expected challenges? They may they may rise in some areas to be a, mo a lot more stringent or how we're going to deal with that. So ourselves as well, we're going to keep ourselves in tune of what's going on in the building codes and changes based on the climate change because we might have to have some uh, awesome performing products to handle some of those situations. So in the uh, development of a technical guide, we do this in collaboration with the manufacturer. You're the one who knows your product the best. Yes, you've worked with NRC to help with the research and everything like that, and we, you've, you've done testing here. You're working with CCMC. We're trying to understand your product, but you're the one who knows your product the best. So in collaboration with the manufacturer, with researchers who are experts in their areas and consultants, we put together the, the technical guide document and again, as I said, it highlights, it's, it's based on the building codes with either standard test methods in there or develop new test methods because of your innovative product, because of the difference on that. And then finally, um, the benchmark values, we get that from the building code. And if there, it doesn't exist in the building code, you might have situations where there's products that have been in the building code forever, but we don't know their performance of it. Some of the research might have to be done to sort of establish, this is the benchmark for this product category or this ex expected use. So we'll establish that. And then finally, with that technical guide in, hell, in hand, with all the test protocols, with all the criteria that you need to meet, and the, the criteria for your manufacturing plant and your installation manual. And if you're successful, we issue a CCMC evaluation report. And so for your innovative product, this evaluation report will help facilitate getting market access because the building officials, those are our biggest users of our CCMC evaluation reports. They're, as I, as I mentioned earlier, they're the ones who enact the legislation. So they're the decision makers. So based on our opinions, they can look at this and say, oh, yes, we can accept this because it meets these intended uses in the building code. So your building officials are the ones that are the biggest users of it. As well, um, architects and engineers and consumers, they can, in our report, we will list you know, what the product is, the performance, um, criteria and the performance results of the product so they can make choices on that based on that information and so they can spec it in their designs, um, the architects, engineers and consumers can ask for it. So that's, that's my end of uh, the innovative product cycle and how we can work together to enable you to get to market access. Um, the other group as I mentioned before is IRAP. Um, at the end of this presentation, I'll give you directions to our booth. We have an awesome business team there, and they'll be able to give you more information on it. But essentially, IRAP, the Industrial Research Assistance Program, they're here to support innovative activities within Canada. So they can provide you advisory um, services, potentially financial support, depending on your situation. And they're also, um, we call it a portal, so if you remember, a portal to NRC, if you remember one of the first slides I said we have a multidisciplinary organization at NRC, our IRAP um, ITAs, so our experts and all that, they can lead you and bring contacts to other, other groups within our NRC, so it's, a, it's an excellent resource for our small and medium enterprises within Canada. And finally, uh, to wrap everything up, um, just so you know that through this presentation, so NRC is the Government of Canada's Research and Development Organization. We work with clients, we work with businesses, we work um, 
to support innovation, to, to support strategic uh, research. So it is for Canada to move us forward. And of course, NRC Construction, um, we've been around for almost 70 years and um, recognized for our, our impartiality because of a government organization, but also our technical credibility.